Welcome to Startup to Storefront, presented by Aura Bora. All right, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're with Dennis from Forever Mood. Thanks for joining. For Thank people you. who don't know, what's the company do? Oh, so Forever Mood is a lifestyle brand, and we start off selling candles, home fragrance. Here and we that, have one in front of us here. Yes, exactly. Okay. You have Cake Top, which is actually one of our most popular candles, which it gives birthday vibes. So if you're ever celebrating something, this is definitely a good choice for you. And um, as of this year, we launched Fine Fragrance. We love what we do. And in terms of why we do what we do is to really inspire people and encourage people to put themselves first, practice self-care. We live in a world where it's so much is happening, so many distractions. And we feel like by putting yourselves first and practicing self-care by actually developing products that encourages that and invokes positive mood, hence the name Forever Mood, mm -hmm. uh, we believe we can make the world a better place. Give people a window. So you, you're a seasoned entrepreneur. Your wife's also a seasoned entrepreneur, yep. right? Knows the game. And so give people a window into your background and then how you landed on fragrances. What's, what did you see in the marketplace that someone with your perspective might be like, oh, there's there's room here. What's okay. what, what, what was missing? Yeah, so my background actually started investment banking Yeah, and um, loved it and um, learned so much, but I was very entrepreneurial, especially at a young age and started off doing events, selling products, like from the days of school, canting, selling drinks, like mm -hmm. the basic stuff. And, but it really taught me that, you know I mean? I was, I was a good salesperson. I okay. enjoyed um, communicating with people. I think that's and, the number one trait of yeah. any entrepreneur. And I think it's so underrepresented today because it's just like, oh, this easy sales, salesman. But sales is such an art. It's so, it's such and it's a... so necessary. Yeah. So I definitely, it gave me a lot of confidence at a very young age. And I loved connecting people. So I held a lot of graduate and young professional network events um, okay. during my young age. And then fast forward into 2016, I decided to move to um, LA and I met my my partner, my wife now. Um, and Give people a window, give her a yeah, name. She, yeah, of course, She's Jackie, a... well, I should call her my, my surname, Jackie Asamwa, but known yeah. as Jackie Aino, um, who is being an influencer, creator, YouTube guru, for a decade, over a decade, and has done a great job, actually. One of the things I think she's done great in comparison to a lot of people is really moving from different platforms. You know, some people, like they, they may be just good YouTubers or they may be just good TikTok people, maybe yeah. just good Instagram. She's managed to really navigate all into all these platforms and really make it a success. So yeah. that's been really impressive and I've learned so much from her. And, and actually when I moved to LA, it was a whole new world. I thought my world was like special sure. investment banking, but coming to LA and learning about this whole creator economy and how big it was and fascinated about how brands were spending millions of dollars to connect to creators was really fascinating to me. So from yeah. a business mind, I was like, what? okay, well, how do I get involved and what sure. can I do to help creators? So you knew what you wanted to do to some extent. Maybe you saw an opportunity in the market. What was the first step in going down the road of fragrances? Well, the first step was that the missus was really passionate about it. She made okay. it very clear. Like her story is that she had a condition called hyperhidrosis, which is a sweating, um, sweating condition. Yeah, That's so, what just happened to me a second. Yeah, yeah so yeah. exactly, you know. <laughs> and then she used to wear fragrance to disguise it and smell okay. good and to give her confidence. So yeah. she fell in love with fragrance in that world. And then fast forward to 2017, we were just talking about in terms of businesses, in terms of what we want to start. And at the time, a lot of people was expecting us to do a beauty brand, like mm -hmm. naturally, because that's where a lot that's of where, yeah, her content her was following. from. Sure. And we had conversations, but then as time went by, come 2020, during the pandemic, um, where there was a lot of unknown in the world. And yeah. it was a time where actually a lot of brands were pushing back, I mean, pulling back on brand deals. So for me as a businessman, I was like, hmm. okay, this is the time to take control of your own destiny. Let's create our own brands. You've been making millions of dollars for these brands. I mean, launching, I mean, hmm. partner up with them and developing products, which is great. And I so think you saw them all contracting, yeah. marketing spend was going down. Yeah, marketing spend was going down. Super interesting. So you, at that okay. time, yeah, so at that time in 2020, this wow. was early on in 2020, I was like, you know what, let's just do something of our own and be in control of our own destiny. And then we were like, let's go back to the idea of doing fine fragrance. And then we were like, let's do candles because truthfully candles is a bit more simpler in terms sure. of the process and the components and how, how regulated it is. It's more easy to launch candles so okay. we thought this was a good time and also everyone was at home i was gonna say everyone's in their house everyone's anyway. at their house anyway so ironically it was couldn't have picked a better time it's actually really interesting so if i'm if i'm staying in my house i'm probably gonna buy a candle <laughs> over buying a fragrance because exactly. right? i'm not going out to Ex smell good for other exactly. people exactly that's so funny so if okay. you look at the data in 2020 and 2021 
fun, I mean, candles was booming. And you, you, I don't know if you go back to it, there was a lot of brands that, even makeup brands that never used to do candles, just started developing candles. Okay. That's how popular it became. Everyone got in the candle Everyone game. got into the candle game. So it really went well for us. It, it took off like a rocket and we literally sold 20,000 units in a space of a few hours. And then 20,000 units, when we got them, we thought wow. that was going to last us for the year because this is our first time really developing our own products. And yeah. to be honest, it was like, okay, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. We don't want to assume. And every, once again, candles is not, it's a hard product to sell as well because you have to remember, you can't actually technically smell it as a consumer. You're literally you gotta believe making it. a decision based on the storytelling. So that sure. was very important. I think that's what sure. we did really well in terms of our brand DNA. We were really good. And if you look at the names, Caked Up, we always come up with cool names and cool um, taglines that um, the consumer and our community that we were trying to target at the time, they could relate to it. So that was very important. And so then the candle business is going well. Do you create more different, like how many? Oh my God. At we, what point did you pivot or at what point? So funny enough, we probably did way too much. So there was a time <laughs> where we were launching four new candles every three months. Okay. We were going crazy. Okay. Like it was, because we were like, well, this is going well. We sold out very yeah, quickly. And actually that's actually a lesson learned in life where sometimes, you know what I mean? Like walk before you run in a sense that we didn't have everything set up. We didn't have a full customer service set up. We didn't okay. have fulfillment set up in the right way. So we, in the early stages, we couldn't ship products to customers on time. We actually ended up having a lot of um, disappointed customers naturally because they're like, where's my products? And we we're trying our best, but sure. we're a very small team. Yeah. Um, we didn't have everything in place in terms of the infrastructure. Yeah. Um, so that was a lot of lessons learned in terms of what I would have done differently in terms of the launch and okay. not trying to overcommit and really learning and getting data. But we were just constantly developing and developing and launching and launching. Yeah. And, real, and what we realized is that because of that, people didn't really get to fall in love with their core products, mm. like which is their core which they're going to keep replenishing sure. versus trying to develop new products all the time. It's like, let them have a core product that they love and they want to get all the time. Yeah. So that's something we learned later on, but I wish we learned earlier. Yeah. Happy problems. Yeah. And, and obviously COVID, who wasn't learning something during COVID? For sure. Okay. And so then at what point do you move into fragrance? So we took way longer on finding fragrance. So we started developing like... Oh, we and knew... why the move? Why the move to fragrance? No, so, People... we've, al so we've always known that we were going to do... Even before okay. we started the brand, finding fragrance was always part of the journey and part of the plan. But okay. it requires capital. It requires development. Yeah. But then because things were going really well with candles, we didn't really put too much attention. So it was kind of like in the back burner. Okay. And then also when we were ready to launch Fine Fragrance, which was probably in the late 2022, where we're like, okay, let's start developing it more. And we wasn't quite ready. And also 2023 was a tough year for the business. So financially, we couldn't put mm. capital in to launch it the way we wanted to. Like, we didn't want to sacrifice just launching one fine fragrance. We actually launched four SKUs, four okay. unique um, fine fragrances. So that was really important to us. Called Forever Mood, we used to launch things in fours. So there's this whole thing where we're like, we want to launch with four new okay. fine fragrances. Yeah. And also the product wasn't ready. So we want to think about us. We don't like launching things unless we're... 100% satisfied and sure. we're convinced that this is going to do really well. So it just took way longer. And and are you bootstrapping at, the, at this time? Yeah. It's, okay. So even you guys are just day, putting in your money. Okay. Yeah. Even to this day, we've got no outside investors. We've actually done okay. this from like literally from the bottom and it, it, it's been tough at times. Sure. Um, but no, honestly, it's been a really fun journey and we've learned so much. And we're now at a stage where like we do need investment, especially it's as we scale. want to scale in Sephora, who's yeah. our retail partner. Like they've been super dope partners but anyone will tell you when you're working with retailers there's a lot of demand to come up with newness to keep up with supply and it's so important because they may have key programs and activations and if you're not ready they're going to go to the next person sure, sure. so that's something we've learned what's the scariest thing in your journey of this company when it came to bootstrapping is it like your credit cards through the roof like what's oh. the what's the moment where you're like i can't i really hope this works no i think the scariest part is that's when you like how are you going to pay employee yeah. like like overheads like <laughs> yeah. it's one thing we like there's times when there's sure. been plenty of times where we're like we're not going to pay ourselves because the business right. is not doing as well as we like right. so we're not going to pay ourselves for a few months but when it gets to a stage where like oh my god people are relying on you to you know what i mean pay them like thankfully to god we've never had any issues but there's times where i'm like we're literally at the wire the next day we're like we yeah. need some funds we need to do something we need to so those are scary times for sure um and it's not for everyone this is why i tell people entrepreneurship Sometimes you you can't feel sorry for yourself, I, I, and I and it's mm. like it comes with the, comes with the territory. And yeah. I've learned to not 
get person because you're like oh my god employees technically they can leave and go whenever they want you're like and then you have to deal with all these other stuff but that's what comes with it and of course in the long run the goal is to build it into this multi you know i mean sure hit the over 100 million in valuation get to a billion valuation that's the long-term goal and it's like yeah that it's just part of the journey and it's part of the sacrifices you've got to make. Yeah, it's not easy. It's I think not. the biggest thing founders also mistake is like they think their employees are going to work as hard as they do. See, oh my God, that was me. I'm not going to lie. Okay. That was me. Okay. And I've, I've been there to, too. And it's such, <laughs> and you have to be very careful because yeah. you're like, you're, you're getting up at six in the morning. You're getting up at, you're working till one in the, in, the, in the night or you're working in the weekends and you're like, you're like, oh, I don't see emails. And you're hoping that would inspire them, like, in a way. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. But at the same time, you're right. They've got a life. And to be honest, it's not necessarily about when they're sending emails. I also believe this whole thing around whether you work eight hours, five hours. Ultimately, I care about you getting the job done. And that's something I've had to reverse. Like, Absolutely. I don't really care about how many hours you work. Yeah. Are you getting your job done? And I think that's the only time where I get frustrated. It's like, like you clearly are not getting your job done and you're clearly right. not keeping up to keeping up with things. So that's when it gets frustrating. But I Absolutely. do agree, you can't get personal. No, you can't. Even if like I'll call people at nine o'clock sometimes and I'm like, I'm like, look, you, I like, I, I don't want to call you either, but I'm calling you for a reason. And so we just got to figure this out, Yeah, which is hard. How did you guys land Sephora? How did that whole partnership come to be? Oh, honestly, Jackie, I'll give that credit yeah. to Jackie. And look, and Sephora have been admirers of Jackie as 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 a creator herself mm -hmm. and what she does and what she means to the community. So naturally, even before we launched the brand, literally, um, Alison, who's great, who works at Sephora and is part of the fragrance team at Sephora, she was very clear to us in the beginning, when you launch a brand, just come to us. Oh, so wow. we've been very blessed. So I'm not okay. going to give you that story where we had to jump hoops. No, we they, they were really rooting for us from early, even before we started. And they actually wanted us to launch at the very, when we launched the candles, they were like, come to us straight away. But we oh, like, wow. that was very intentional. We were like, we want to just do DTC first. Yeah. We want to learn and before we jump straight into retail. So that was very important. So that's why we delayed And it. how do they launch? Like, do they have a typical launch strategy? Is it in a particular region first? Is it like, how do they go about really launching yeah. a new product? No, good question. So they look at your demand. They look at, okay, okay. really, how, what's your um, inventory um, load? Because obviously they're going to like, Got well, it. if you don't have enough Got inventory, it. they can't put you in all stores. So Sephora have just over 600 stores in the US. So at the moment, we're only in half of their stores at the moment. So we haven't even hit the services of like all their stores. Okay. And they do that intentionally to see how you do sure. with um, obviously a smaller quantity of stores and if you can keep up with demand and obviously if you prove yourself and you can make great sales, the goal is for them to obviously expand that. Mm -hmm. You can go Canada and go to other locations, um, which is what we're trying to do. Where did you launch with them first? Um, so we region? just launched in the US and it was like, okay. uh, in fact, when we actually launched Canada, we did all stores, which okay. was crazy. We actually did all stores when we first started, but now we've reduced it. Just keeping it because like fine fragrance is slightly different as well. It's a different beast. So based so, on the content that, that your wife produces, your, your co-founder in this case, yeah. Is Sephora learning anything that's like really different for them? Because it's a different approach, right? It it's is. not just like a brand. It's like it's a it's sort of this uh, content creator, content forward first brand. Hundred percent. And Sephora is actually interesting because we've done a number of social media post collabs with Sephora, mm -hmm. and it's interesting when they even when we're talking about how we should do the content, they look at it very different. Versus where we are trying to tell a story, Sephora's videos are very quick, straight to the point. Very we, product heavy? Yeah. Okay. Um, sometimes. Okay. But with us, we are very, we like to tell stories. And not to say that Sephora doesn't do that, but in terms of how it, it might be a bit, it may be That's double the time to yeah. Sephora. Because so it was interesting when we were doing our relaunch video for um, Define Fragrance, they wanted the video done in 15 seconds. But for us, it was like this, for us to really truly connect with our audience, we felt like it needed 30 seconds. Mm. So we felt like, and they were like, our audience, how they, react to videos okay. is this so we had to kind of you know what i mean collab and that's what it, what collaboration is and find a, a middle ground which sure. ended up working well but i do notice the way we do our videos and the way they would want to do the video is very different for sure and do they have a strategy for tiktok are they looking at it tiktok yes they are there um but i wouldn't once again it's a whole different game it is too. i'm about to say tiktok's even a whole different tiktok you can get so for me the way i describe tiktok yeah. to instagram so instagram me i think it's aesthetically pleasing like the way the that's visuals right. that's right and stuff versus tiktok you can just put your face you don't have to have a great yeah. background you just have fun you could be it's in your more, lab yeah your it's warehouse. more just having because it's very quick everyone's moving on to a, the next video so you really got to grab their attention and do something quickly and yeah that's gonna get their attention straight away and then at what point did you guys know you had success with with sephora like what did they see what are you guys seeing 
Oh yeah, so you know when you have success with Sephora is once, funny enough, when, I, when you get emails from the heads, okay. they're like, oh my God. We're like, just one word, it's subject line, you're like, great, like you lot, like, and then they start inviting you and letting you participate in certain programs. So Sephora have a, mon- oh, no way. a bunch of programs. So they have something called Sephora, um, Sephora okay. which is a yearly thing they've been doing for three years where it's a chance for you to, uh, it's like a expo where you have a booth, um, customers come, they spend hundreds of dollars for these tickets, they get to experience your products, we can provide free samples. Wow. And not everyone can do that. Sure. And th- like, and I knew they believed in us when they, you know what I mean, supported us and that. And obviously we're still a fairly small brand, but the, the support they give to us, the resources is amazing for us to participate in these things that only typically the big brands do. And are they really like the only player in town? I think they're the most unique play in town from a luxury self-care, personal care product. Place yeah, it's such a retail. brand. It's like yeah. people know you're yeah. going to get something good inside. You know why you're going. So, and look, and there's obviously other great retailers, but I think Sephora have a unique way of telling their story and having their, their community and actually their beauty insider. The, these yeah. are like their members, their top members. They, it, it's grown so quickly. And I know it's doing so well because they also do, do this yearly thing where creators have to submit to participate and become a member and it's like a whole thing it's like a whole community i want to be the support wow. do so many dope events and so many dope activations and people want to participate do you guys have any dream collabs that you think about any people you really want to work with or launch certain products with oh yeah for sure we we don't really do that many we actually did a sure. dope one earlier this year with um, Diageo, which was like a big oh, deal right um, what did you guys Rio. do with them yeah um yeah, crown real um, sure. um the drink so yeah. they had um the blackberry um, drink um, that they had the flavor drink and thankfully they reached out to us and like do you have a blackberry candle that you scent that you're okay. working with yeah and thankfully because it was very short like we had to do this in three months okay and we thankfully we had something in our library and this is the importance of building and developing and even if you don't launch it you have something and you can work with and, and thankfully wow. we had a vessel it's just crazy how the world works. we had a vessel that matched their branding yeah so timing just really worked and that went really, and we was literally on. So it a, was like a candle and like a crown? Yeah, so okay. they had their drink and it was like in a nice box that they would send to um, creators as wow. a gifting and then we sold it and actually it was actually a really, really good cause. And we actually donated a percentage of our funds to Black Girl Ventures. Okay. Um, so it was actually a good cause as well. What's next for the brand? Where do you want to take this? What, where are you at now? So you're going to try to raise some capital? Yeah, yeah. So this is, yeah. So we're four years into the business now. Okay. Um, we want to, in the first quarter of next year, really try and raise our first round of investment. Um, and as I said, the purpose of that is really to keep up with in- inventory demand. And is that a seed round or what, what would it be for you guys? Because you guys you can, have you, traction. You, and this is so funny because you know, you, you obviously as an investor, you've invested in something. And it's just so funny, like the, the terminology, whether it's seed, pre-seed or yeah. A. But for us, um, we're looking to launch. I mean, it's our first round, but the way I'm looking at it is that we've obviously made a, a substantial sure, amount of money in terms yeah, of revenue. You're not at day zero. Not you're, at day zero. Way we've, further along. Yeah, yeah. We've yeah, we've exceeded and we're gonna just give you context, like we should exceed um over six million revenue this year. So okay. for for me, I'm Congrats. like, okay. So um thank you. Yeah. And so the goal is to obviously get a good valuation, raise and be able to double that next year. I wanna like I really want us to hit that um so let's eight go figure. let's go into your investment banking yeah. for a minute here. And so in the world you're living in, you're you're looking at this space, we yeah. call it perfume, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah. What is the perfume industry like? Like what are you seeing in the fragrance oh world? <laughs> How big are these companies? It's six million a lot. Are you past oh, the babies. whole like we're babies. okay, you're okay, but you're past the whole like delusion stage. You've cleared the five million dollar yeah. hurdle mark. So yeah. to some extent you yeah. know ten is the next number. Yeah, yeah. What is that like? Like, what's the data show you when it comes to how big a fragrance brand can be? Oh, honestly, just look at the content. If you look at the, in fact, the do com- this. Yeah. In fact, I'll tell you how big it is. If you look at affiliate links on TikTok shop, look at which category comes top and that will tell you the answer. And is it fragrance? Beauty, fragrance. Fragrance is one of the leaders. Top oh, two. No way. Yeah. Okay. So that just speaks volume. And you look at I the I wouldn't cons- have guessed that. That's it, interesting. And actually, it's so fact because I'm... I, Prior to meeting my my wife, I was never a fragrance person. I never used to spray. I used to do all That's the hard natural to No, no, I kid you not. <laughs> I, I'm not making it up. I used to walk around with my own scent. And I thought I smelled good, so I never thought I needed any <laughs> um, fragrance. But it's such a fascinated industry, and obviously meeting the fragrance houses around the world, how they operate. Because I'm like, it's you spray yourself and you smell good. But even the way fragrance 
the journey of a fragrance when you spray it, how it changes over time yeah. and how it's different for each one of us. It's right. not going to smell the That's same right. on That's me right. than it's going to smell on you. And that was really, I was like, why is there so many, so much content and so much fun with it? But it is really that world. It's so much, wow. it's so interesting. So many layers to it. And, and what's the, how many, how many fragrances does the average woman have? My missus has a whole, I, she has probably 200 fragrances, but obviously uh, that's yeah. because She's she loves game. it. She's an she, outlier. But I would say, that if I had to, that's a very good question, but if I had to guess, an average, someone that uses it every day, the average person, they would probably have a collection of 20 fragrances okay. on their shelves. Okay. And that's the beautiful, and the great thing is that they layer it. There's a layering you layer part. It. That's it's what not, I you did. don't just use one, you yeah. use multiple and you fall in love. You're like, oh, I want these two. So you end up using it both. So that's really cool. Joseph Malone has a way of uh, educating the consumer on it. Oh, you think, okay, on I layering. Okay. I think, I think they're okay, I primarily that. responsible for Americans understanding how to layer. I think layering is like, if you're not from here, yeah. Europeans do it. But I think in America, Joe Malone really taught people like oh you don't buy one you buy three you buy four smell them all together and it's yep. a whole different thing and the great thing is a re it's a great replenishment product when you're done you want to buy it again you want to buy it, it again yeah and so you have four of them four of your, your yeah, heroes yeah so we have four unique um scents and yeah jack jackie's the inspiration like for me i'm behind the scenes i my, my role is to keep um things ticking operationally day to day mm -hmm. manage the team lead them grow it What's your key hire that you're trying to really get right now? So like, we just did one, which okay. I'm hoping will make a different a product development manager. We really, to answer one of your questions earlier, where do we want to go? Like, we really want to move into other product categories. Okay. Like, this is just the beginning. There's so many ideas and yeah. cool like concepts. What? Like, car, I'm just thinking of all the things that I yeah. buy that are fragrances. Car air fresheners. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you yeah got, candles. Yeah. I don't want to give home, too... Home, home stuff, yeah. home decor. Yeah. But put it like this. That's why I said we're like, when you when I describe our brand as a lifestyle, it's like think about everything gotcha. that you do. Yeah. Like whether you're coming out of bed, whether it's a, a fragrance for the fabric and your the bed sheet and stuff, mm -hmm. or you to point your car, or cleaning your your products, like washing your products. Like there's so many oh, avenues. So for me, that's what gets me excited. Yeah. And sometimes I get excited where the team's like, Dennis, relax. But no, I'm really excited that we've got a product person because um, we need that to really help us expand and develop and move into other spaces. Um, we hired a good CFO, fractional CFO, okay. which is, you know, Smart. is critical. Yeah. Like to make sure your numbers are in place. And one of the best advice I can say is like, when we first started like making sure that all your numbers are there and it's recorded and tracked because we don't, it's just more headache having to go back and clean that up. So totally. something I've definitely learned is important to have. I can see you guys being like a kind of a powerhouse team in some way during like an investment meeting. Like you can obviously handle your piece and she can obviously handle her piece, but together it's a really interesting dynamic where it's like this, you guys really know what you're doing. No, I, what you just said is so, and it's actually magical. Like it's but, your secret power. Yeah. I think, we, yeah when, I'm, when she's speaking, I just let her do her thing. And when I'm speaking, like she is like, we know which questions to answer. And yeah. this is why I love it. And on that point, people always, you've probably heard is like sometimes people that work as couples or families, it's, most cases it goes wrong. Yeah. And for us, thankfully it hasn't. And the reason why I believe <laughs> it does work is that we respect each other's skill set. We understand what our strengths and weaknesses are and we're there to support each other. Yeah. And whenever we have a disagreement and stuff, we does, we know how to get to a place where we're like, okay, this is how we want to move forward versus like, oh, because you have decided you don't like it. No, we, so it's been really, really, we're very blessed in that sense. How did you arrive at your price point for your product? Good question. So we knew, so this is, um, Jackie will tell the story better, but in terms of the price point, she was very, very keen to be like, well, if you look at the market, the more premium, because we're a luxury brand to mm -hmm. us. And so we were looking at the premium, they, they price it like $150, $200 for totally. their perfume. And totally. we're like, that's not accessible. So we, when we came to the market and we started this brand, it was very important that we had a brand that were accessible to, especially our people, like they can have access to luxury and enjoy these things and mm -hmm. like feel like, they can be part of this. That was very important. So um, when we looked at the market and looked did the comps, we were like, $79 sounds like a good price point. Okay. Um, so we landed it based on, okay, how can we um, make this more accessible to as many people? And then what are the prices out there? And then $79 sounds like a sweet In point. affordable luxury. Affordable luxury. That's exactly it. That makes a lot of sense. What can people know? What else do you want to, what are you dropping in 2025? Anything exciting on the horizon besides your investment round? Yeah. So 2025, I would say, look, definitely expect more juices. Um, that's something you should expect. Two, we're excited about a potential 
partnership that we're working with with someone okay. don't want to give too much away a there per, a human being a human being that's okay. really <laughs> inspirational in the beauty space okay. um, and creating something dope and um, with our fine fragrance so okay. hopefully that comes into fruition um, I'm just really excited about building the team. I think yeah. that's what keeps me excited, having a good team. And we have a really good team of people and just wanting to grow that out and see people win and feel like they're part of the journey and stuff like that. That means a lot to me. So super excited about that. And then also international expansion. I don't mm. know that will happen. That Well, we, we should be doing fulfillment because I know we have a lot of customers in the UK, mm -hmm. Australia and other areas around the world where they're like, I need a product. They can't get their hands on it. So we are really excited about offering international shipping next year, okay. but also being able to potentially and one day go into other retail um, outlets or even Sephora in London, like whatever it may be. That seems like a no-brainer. That, that's, that's for me would be, a brand, especially from a guy from London, I need to yeah. come. It's funny, miss. as we're doing the sports bar, somebody said to me, are you guys going to have your own custom scent? And I was like, what? They're like, yeah, yeah like a hotel. Not? And I was like, I hadn't even thought of yeah, this. I was no. like, what an idea. No. And I was like, what would, a, what would a sports bar scent you smell like? Yeah, maybe kinda cool, maybe right? we should speak. Maybe I can, we can create a custom um, scent awesome. for you guys. It made me think about things a lot differently. Yeah. I was like, this is a really interesting yeah. concept. And why not, right? Yeah, yeah. To try. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's a no-brainer. And everyone has their, you probably, you, whether you know it or not, there's a scent that you're like, this reminds me of my, the place, that I'm, the environment I'm trying to set. 100%. Yeah. Usually when I'm in Italy, I'll buy a, like a new cologne or something okay, like that. Because cool. it, it reminds me of being there. I'm curious. See? And exactly. Yeah. And that's that's what's so fun about fragrance the and salt I, air like there's something about it yeah so what's your go-to frag i'm curious what's your like go-to fragrance i just feel well ex nilio you heard of them ex nilio no. they have a, a shop here yeah. on sycamore in west hollywood the biggest thing i have with fragrance and it's like how i carry myself with fashion i think sunglasses like i don't want anyone to have them <laughs> which which is a problem yeah. because it means i have to spend stupid money yeah, to like yeah, yeah, you yeah. know or do a custom thing which is yeah. not it's not none of this yeah. is cheap yeah. but that's the thing and so okay. i try to just buy things that i'll never smell again essentially but to your point it only smells like that on you yeah. right because it's yeah. like you have a different chemical makeup your pheromones whatever yeah. it might be yeah um, but yeah, next Nelio right now. But it always changes. It's also it's also seasonal. For it me. is. That's the great thing as well. It changes yeah. all the time. Well, look, where can people follow? Where can they support the brand? Yeah. So follow us um, at Forever Mood. So it's spelled F O R V R M O O D. No and, E. Um, yeah. So Forever Mood without the E's. And then yeah, you can also follow me personally, Dennis Asamwa, um on um, Instagram. Yeah, that's what I'm like. Where else am I? Yeah, Instagram is <laughs> like my main platform. And it's spelled my surname. Well, my first name is with one end, so D-E-N-I-S. And then my surname is A-S-A-M-O-A-H. Appreciate you coming on the pod. No, thank you for having me. This Thanks, is a great man. talk, man. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, share with your friends, your family, or anyone you might think might benefit from the conversation we've had today. And if you haven't already, please take a moment to leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. We'd greatly appreciate it. Your feedback helps us improve and reach more people who can benefit from our discussions. The best way to stay connected with us and get the latest updates on future episodes is through our social media channels. You can find us at Startup Storefront. We'll be back next Tuesday with another great episode. See you then.